Vermont to upstate New York. This is The Anything Show with John Francois, featuring Andrew Benderton of the Lifestyle of a Gay Black Boy podcast. Now, here's that John guy. That John guy is here with Andrew Benderton from the Lifestyle of a Gay Black Boy podcast. Why am I repeating him? The announcer pretty much made it clear. Hi, Andrew. Hi, that John guy. Hi. Hola. <laughs> Andrew from Rochester, New York. Me, me. Me here, John from Colchester, Vermont. <clears throat> if I'm clearing my throat uh, very disgustingly, it's because I just had some powdered donuts slightly before to uh, wake me up because this is the Sexy Saturday Night Anything Show. Yay! Me and Andrew recording this at 9.30 p.m. on Saturday, February 12th. Andrew, how do you feel? Mayan? Oh, you know, they say the nighttime's the right time. The nighttime's the right time to uh, get some donut ecstasy in your system. That's what I say. Actor and comedian Tommy Davison going to be joining us from In Living Color and The Proud Family coming up uh, a little bit later, later on. I'll be also having a conversation with <clears throat> Andrew Levitas, director of the new Johnny Depp film Minamata. Andrew, yourself, my, the Andrew that I'm speaking to right now, you said that you could have sworn you've seen that film. I'm pretty sure I did. I'm having flashbacks or a seizure. I don't know which one. Oh, well, how about both? How about a seizure or a, a slashback? <laughs> a seizure sounds like it could be painful pushing. Oh, yeah. You know I like pain, baby. Sarah Wendell and Alicia Ray, co-host of the podcast Love Struck Daily, just in time for Valentine's Day, which I think might be today as you're listening to this. Who knows? Uh, <clears throat> Seth Rogen does not care about the Oscars. We'll talk about that in our celebrity gossip. For our Let's Get Viral, we'll hear a missing pizza rolls rant. Headlines, we're going to ask if the Super Bowl should be moved to Saturday. Listen, subscribe, follow, rate, review The Anything Show with Jean-Francois on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, wherever you get podcasts. Find us on social at Facebook.com slash Anything Show and Instagram and TikTok at Anything Show Francois. We are also on YouTube. Check us out there because I don't think anybody knows that we're on YouTube, Andrew. It's sad. You need to know about the YouTube. I know. The YouTube. It's a hot new thing that kids are into today. We definitely don't know about the YouTube, right? <laughs> well, you'll discover you on the tube that is you. Oh, my God. You are so poetic. Uh, I, I hate to destroy your poetry with some uh, mindless dance music, but why the hell not? Uh, you, you, you ready to acknowledge some sponsors, Andrew? Let's talk about them. All right, let's talk about Perky's. You have that sticky bra that you just need to have for that cocktail party, that wedding event, whatever. Perky's is what you need to do. All right, it's a backless, strapless bra that sticks directly to a woman's breast to give shape and support without straps showing. Now, you know what? Not even just women, but men like Andrew can wear them too because, Andrew, I think you said you're going to get yourself a set of Perky's. Oh, I am. I got to perk up my perkies with some perks. Ooh, oh, I love it. I love it. All right. So let me tell you something about this founder, Rosie, the 25-year-old founder of Perkies. She created the only sticky bra on the market with replacement adhesives. It's clean, confident, and comfortable. Perkies has added reusable nipple covers, three shades of nude, and Perkies panties as well, which is a seamless underwear, the softest underwear in the game to its line. So again, wedding, cocktail party, date night, you name it, your top is going to require a non-traditional bra. So this is why Perkies has got you covered. Check out Perkies at perkies.com, P-E-R-K-I-E-S.com. Are you all perked up, Andrew? I am all perked up and ready. Yes. Support for The Anything Show also coming from Disctopia. If you're looking for the podcast services of all podcast services, say you're a podcaster like me and Andrew and you want uh, that platform that will allow you to seamlessly post your audio so that it can be distributed everywhere, Disctopia is there because it has more features and flexibility than any other platform from unlimited storage and uploads to multiple networks. Uh, you have private and exclusive episodes you can upload, which you can get paid for by Disctopia themselves distribute your podcast everywhere using your uh, uh, be, be using your rss feed uh you can build a podcast profile page where, where you can manage all your episodes and you can have like access to an embeddable episode web player all on a secure site uh there's unlimited downloads from all your listeners and unique listener reports you got web player analytics that are all integrated with the best technology analytics all on top of that you're going to get 24 7 world-class customer support god forbid anything goes wrong but i know nothing's going to go wrong because disc 
Tektopia is the uh, thing of perfection. Isn't that right, Andrew? It truly is. It's perfection in one app. Ooh, perfection in one cookie, actually, I would say. Disctopia gives you the creative freedom for all your podcasts with integrated merch. Just upload it all in one place. And then you can set your content to be downloadable or even stream only. Disctopia, that is D-I-S-C-T-O-P-I-A. Thanks for supporting the Anything Show. Disctopia is the podcaster's paradise. All right, Andrew, while I'm on Donut Crack right now, shall we uh, figure out what the hell is happening with our headlines this week of the 14th let's do it yes let's do it as i look for the headline music to kill time uh here is your headlines on the anything show where we go there we go All right, we're starting on what, Andrew? I think the Super Bowl. Yeah, there we go. A new survey says 48% of football fans said they'd like to see the Super Bowl move to Saturday. Um, Andrew, I feel like this is right up there with those surveys that are like, eh, do you want the day after Super Bowl off from work? And obviously a lot of people will say yes, but it never really gets done. So what do you think about this? Are you do you think we're ever gonna have a Super Bowl on a Saturday? I really hope we do. Super Bowls on a Saturday would be meaning there'd be Super Bowl brunch on Sunday. So I would be attending. All right. All right. Well, uh, I let's just keep our fingers crossed. Let's let's just say that. Uh, And also just the idea of like football fans going to a a mimosa brunch the next day, like fancying it up. That, that, That that's a that's an amusing image in my head, Andrew. Yeah, that's what you have to do. You have mimosas with your pinky up, and you're like, so about those Packers, they did really good, <laughs> didn't they? Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, my God, the Bengals and the Rams. Did you hear about their head coach? Oh, my God. How about that tight end? Oh, Lord. Did I snort? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to be a pig. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to be a pig there. Hey, you know what, Andrew? Uh, I, I feel like the Super Bowl is less of a thing this year. Maybe I'm like going crazy, but uh, there's a recent survey that did say that you know game day spending could be down about 20 bucks. So where it used to be like $108 per person, now uh, the average person is going to be spending like, what, 88 bucks on Super Bowl this year? 28% of people claim that they do not plan to tune in, which is up from 21 percent last year. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to sound like a baby here. The last few years, I've always uh, been watching the Super Bowl, particularly with my friend Mary. We would stay up until the game was over. This year, I had to let her down, sadly, because uh, A, I just don't have it in me to watch a sport I don't know and don't care about. But also B, I work in the early mornings now. So 7 to 8 p.m., like right around when the game is just getting going, that's when Papa got to go to bed. So I don't know, Andrew. I mean, should I be spanked for not being young and hip anymore? Um, I don't think you should be spanked for that. Spanking <laughs> is a, uh, what is it, a gift. It's a present. So, you know, for good things, you could get a spanking. For the Super Bowl, you know, I'm just going to catch it on Netflix this year or something. I really think it's like, it, there's just so much of a commitment there. And I never really got into the TV show. So, you know, <laughs> there you go again with thinking that, that the Super Bowl is like some kind of Game of Thrones fictional TV series. Well, uh, mind you, uh, it is not on Netflix. I do know that since NBC carries the Super Bowl, it's going to be on Peacock. Uh, it'll be uh, I think it'll be live streaming on Peacock as it's being live on television. So I think after the fact, you can actually stream it on Peacock, Andrew. So you're close enough. Yeah, you know, it's there. And I don't know, what what do they get after this? Do they, like, get a car or something? Uh, sure. They get a car. They get a pickle. You know, they get a big pickle in a jar that they can just uh, wave around and be like, hey, here's my here's my championship pickle. Ooh. Slap a <laughs> people with pickle at the club. I'm down, down for it. Instead of a trophy? Come on. Uh, well, uh, how, how changed would the game of football be if they just had a championship pickle? <laughs> I'm telling you, I would be an avid football watcher at that point. If it's for the big pickle, like, let's do it. Because I hear that a lot of people go to the Super Bowl. So it kind of just seems like they're giving this thing to everybody now. Yeah, yeah. You are, you know, goodness gracious, the, the pickle. Uh, that, that, that's going to stick with me forever. Uh, you know, hey, uh, th- there might be a lot of men that have been eating a lot of pickles throughout the football season. In fact, they say in a recent survey, Andrew, 37% of men 
have gained weight during the football season. I feel like this is one of those no-duh surveys because, you know, you sit on your ass, you watch football, eat chips, dip, pizza. That seems to be the whole thing. Um, but, I mean, I'm guessing that if it's a, a trend every year that men will gain weight during the football season, then pretty much after uh, Sunday night, which is known as like the biggest eating day of the year, we're going to have like a big obesity epidemic. Very true. <clears throat> it's the big chip and dip agenda. Um, big chip, they are out there and they're getting people to gain weight. And if you haven't heard of the conspiracy in the 70s, they took over the potato industry and decided to make Americans unhealthy. Is this true? Are you making this up? Um, it's This is real. The big chip agenda, it's big. I think you messed up your words. Did you say the big ship addenda? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they got me. They're trying to censor this. It's the FCC working with the big chip like Lay's. They're out there. They're taking over the world. Okay. 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 All right. I I, I will pretend to believe you there. Um. You know. Hey. Uh, ch- chips and dips. What What I will say is that they are a very addictive agenda. Because once you have w- once you've had one chip and dip, you you can't stop, Andrew. You know that. You really can't. Once you get that good dip of, and during the Super Bowl, someone always makes delicious Rotel dip. And as soon as you get that first dip, your body's like, go fill up an entire plate and bowl with this and eat it in a disgusting manner that you're looking ashamedful in front of other people. Yeah. You know, uh, the same way that I eat chips and dips very disgustingly, uh, same thing with pizza. Now, pizza, of course, is a very... Very regular, wonderful Super Bowl delicacy. In fact, there was this pizza chain near Philly, Andrew, that had to apologize after they ran an ad that showed food and a picture of a cappuccino. Um, <clears throat> now, I, I hope that people are not eating pizza and cappuccino at the same time, because that's just a weird combination. Uh, now, you're saying to yourself, OK, you know, it's a picture of food and a cappuccino, John. What's going on? But what they didn't realize is that the coffee picture was photoshopped. So, Andrew, the cream on top was actually a picture of a fully naked man. Uh, I mean, what are your thoughts? I mean, I think it kind of ties in together because if you think about it, pizza is basically food porn. Mm. I definitely like this. A hot slice and a hot man to swallow. Sounds very comforting. (laughs) A hot slice and a hot man to swallow. (laughs) Yes. You blow them and then swallow them. It's delish. Oh, Lord. The cappuccino, people. I feel like we just lost our license here, Andrew, to, to broadcast a podcast here. That's This is just, this is a new level. I love it. A hot slice and a hot man to swallow. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, let's talk about potatoes. Oh, I'd love me to swallow a potato. I'd love me to swallow a potato. Is that what I just said? Uh did. Yeah. So, I mean, do you have any business going to Idaho, Andrew? I know there's a bunch of white people. I know us black people don't really want to go anywhere near Idaho, but they have potatoes. So maybe we should go there for their potato perfume. I kid you not. The Idaho Potato Commission has created a limited edition potato perfume that smells like a fresh plate of French fries. It's sold out online. However, there is a contest on social media to win a free bottle in case you're interested. I'm not, Andrew. Look, I love uh, to smell actual French fries and eat them. But if I am near someone, even you... That smells like French fries. I tend to think, okay, that person is unemployed and hasn't showered in days. But you're saying, Andrew, that uh, you feel the opposite. I do. It gets me feeling a little randy. I think that it would be great for like a role play scenario. Like your partner is supposed to be a fry cook and you walk in and you're like, yeah, you smell like French fries, baby. (laughs) And then it just goes from there. Yes. Can I pour some ketchup on you, baby? Oh, how about no salt this time? No, so no salt. What is French fries with no salt, Andrew? You got to salt that shit up. You know what? Some people like it. And I am worried about those people. Those are like the people who put on their socks after their pants. I'm a little concerned. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? Uh, is it? I mean, but isn't it romantic, though? Isn't it romantic to, uh, you know, have... Nothing but socks on for Valentine's Day. How about that, Andrew? This is probably why this is probably why a new poll found that Valentine's Day is the least popular holiday in America because we have disgusting people like whoever that is, Mr. Socketitis, who likes to have sex with just socks on. You know who you are. 
I'm tired. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. You know what, uh, Andrew? Feel free to respond to that. But I think after this, I'm going to get out of headlines. <laughs> you know what? Everybody has their thing. I kind of find it kind of hot if a guy just has on a pair of socks, but they've got to be clean. Mm. Like they've got to be real clean. Don't get in my bed with dirty socks. Mm. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Well, um, hey, you know if you're going to get in bed with me, make sure your socks are clean, or else I'm going to take you to the cleaners. <laughs> Does that even make sense? I'm going to take you to the cleaners. How is that dirty? That was the best 80s movie line ever. (laughs) Well, yes, I am 52 years old. So, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) If you have a headline you want to give us, Facebook.com slash The Anything Show, Instagram and TikTok at Anything Show, Francois. Hey, John and Andrew here. We're doing a show on Saturday night where it's late and it's quite all right. We're going to have our viral videos coming up in just a second. Hey, Tommy Davison coming up later on from In Living Color, The Proud Family, all those great comedy things. Sarah and Alicia from the Love Struck Daily podcast also coming up. Andrew Levitas, the director of the new Johnny Depp film, Miramata. But Andrew, you know what? I think this is a good time to be infected by the virus of love. What do you say, man? In fact, to me, deep into my bones. Oh, deep into your bones. Yes, I will. That virus is going to cut deep with our segment called Let's Get Viral. Come on, turn that mother effing music up. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Uh, shall we start with this video? A girl is in her bedroom trying to record a video. That's a setup. Uh, but she's interrupted by her roommate who's outside the door shouting about some missing pizza rolls. Now, I sent this video to my girlfriend, Tony, the other day, Andrew, and she would laughed at it because she thought this is so her when it comes to food. And maybe it is you as well. So uh, uh, if, you ever have, if you've ever been passionate about pizza rolls, you know what I'm talking about when you listen to this. What? Have you eaten any pizza rolls since the night that I made those pizza rolls? No. Okay, so listen. I'm keeping track of how many pizza rolls we eat on the fridge because I took 36 of them hoes out the other night and the bag tried to tell me there was 100 in there, which means that there would be 64 rolls left in that bag. And I'll tell you what, it looks like about 40. So if I find out that there's only like 70-something rolls in that bag, we're calling Totino's and we're leaving them a very strongly worded message. Yeah, you know what? If you tell me that there's 100 pizza rolls and there's only 20 in the bag, then yes, by God, I'm going to protest, Andrew. Okay, I am 100% with him about going after Tostino's if the bag was not filled all the way. But if somebody ate your pizza rolls, I am with you. Press them and like figure out where's my pizza rolls at. I want them. Yeah. Oh, God. Where's my rose, bitch? <laughs> All right, a woman doing an online video application for a job at SkyWest Airlines was rehearsing what she was going to say and trashing the interview questions in the process. Oh, this is funny because what she uh, started to do, Andrew, was just record too early. So while she was uh, answering the interview questions, she was caught basically uh, trashing the uh, interview itself. So let me see if you can catch this because it's a little bit subtle. So the question is the stupid, cheesiest question I've ever read in my life. All right. What is your impression of Sky West company culture and how does that resonate with you? Yeah. So before she even like answered the question, uh, quote unquote, respectfully, she just called it the stupidest, cheesiest question. Now, do you think that Sky West Airlines hired her, Andrew? I doubt it. Yeah. I wish they did, you know, just so they can fire her. Just on the spot. That would be nice. (laughs) (laughs) That that would be. All right, Andrew, uh, you know, beware, because it seems like uh, lately I've just been, uh, you know, uh, putting out a lot of baby and kid videos. Because, you know, I'm a a father. I'm I'm expecting a child. No, I'm not. I'm not, Andrew. You you really thought you really thought I was actually (laughs) expecting a child. Did, Did you really believe that? I, you know, I did, and I'm so awkward when people tell me they're having kids because I don't know if I should say congratulations or be like, um, okay. Nah, nah, kids are overrated. They, they're, they're, there's just too many of them, and, and I just don't think that they should exist. But anyway, uh, that's that's definitely something that Tony wants to hear. <laughs> I love you. All right, uh, what, what are we doing? I think there's a video where uh, there's a kid that's going to show some respect to his uh, dada. No, 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 no. Okay, here's how it is. So the the, the kid uh, is uh, saying da-da 
but the mama wants him to say mama, but he keeps saying dada. So uh, enjoy this kid just saying dada. Say mama. Dada. No. Dada. <gasps> you say mama. You're getting everything. Dada. No. Clearly the kid has a favorite, Andrew. Clearly the kid prefers the dada over the mama. That kid knows how to do it. Remember, babies secretly judge us before they can start communicating. So that mom did something. Oh, she probably took the kid's food away when the kid did not want that to happen. So the kid is uh, taking revenge by saying, eh, Dada is my real parent. You go over there, you street bum. She sounds like the type of mom that says open up for the airplane. And dad is like, here comes the dump truck. And the kid likes the dump truck better. There you go. There you go. Dads rule the world. Sorry, moms. I know you pushed those babies out of your vagina, but that's so last year. Dads, (laughs) dads, they just kind of stand around and they wait for something to happen. And they're the best parent in the world. So sorry. They got got all the credit. All righty. Let's uh, hear a kid try to say kitchen, but he screws up badly. Chicken. Kitchen. Chicken. Kitchen. 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 Chicken. You know, he says chicken instead of kitchen, Andrew, which makes sense because there is chicken in the kitchen. Right? This kid is right. This kid's on to something. Yeah. I mean, the mom's like, no, 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 say this word. No, the, the kid is telling you to get him some damn chicken in the kitchen. <laughs> right. He's like, I know where the kitchen is. I want you to get the chicken out of it. Yeah. The kid's smart. There you go. All right. Finally, a four year old girl. Why? Oh, God. There's so many kid videos. I, I don't know what I'm doing to myself. Um, a four year old girl snowboarding in a dinosaur outfit was hooked up to a microphone by her family. So if you're listening right now and you have a kid that is snowboarding and loves snowboarding, I mean, you might as well just mic them up because they will say the most adorable things while they are mic'd up. In the winter, s- snowboarding down uh, Canyon Mountain or whatever the hell parents like to put their children on. Let's go, Dad. Let's get up and go in that secret path. Oh, yeah, Shreddy Dad. Someone's in our secret path. This way, you'll slip. I won't fall. Maybe I will. That's okay, because we all fall. Have fun, Dad. Yeah, that's exactly what this kid was just saying, like the whole time while while the kid was uh, mic'd up. Uh, you just just all these random, adorable little kid things, Andrew. No, this, okay, this kid should be a ski instructor. One, a four year old ski snowboarding. What? Yeah. How does that happen? Hey, you know what? Uh, I would love a four year old teacher. I mean, because imagine like all the days off and the extra recesses and longer lunch breaks you get because they understand. They understand the enjoyment of all that. They do. They understand the enjoyment of it. And then because they're a four-year-old kid, they don't have that filter yet. So they'll just walk up and like, you're bad. You're really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. All righty. Well, going for four-year-olds to viruses. That's Let's Get Viral. Of course, I'm not advocating for children to get viruses. That's awful. So don't. The don't. children are walking viruses. Oh, wow. Okay, you said that, Andrew, not me, okay? You said that. <laughs> you said that and not me. As someone with a girlfriend listening who wants to have children with me, I am all for children not having viruses. Andrew, what, what say you? <laughs> you know what? It's natural selection, and kids are going to get them. So I hope every child is safe and fine. But I still stick by it. A germ is a kid's best friend. They will get you sick. All right. Well, there you go. That's your viral videos. If you have a viral video, send it to us, facebook.com slash anything show, Instagram and TikTok at anything show Francois. All right. We got to acknowledge more wonderful partners of the anything show, such as Hydrating Hydration, the electrolyte powder drink packets. Andrew, you want some packet in your drinks? I do. This is a great music choice for this, too. Oh, yeah. Because it gets you pumping. Like, oh, my God, let me get that. Let me get those electrolytes in my belly. All right. Starting in the midst of the pandemic, the founder of Hydronic Hydration, a frontline healthcare worker, started developing constant headaches. That sucks. So a landmark research study published early during the pandemic showed that up to 81 percent of frontline healthcare workers developed new headaches, mainly because of their PPE, which stands for personal protective equipment like face masks 
and face shields, which prevented them from eating and drinking properly while on the job. Uh, you know, the founder would leave work tired, dehydrated, burnt out. This founder, whose name we don't even know yet. So founder, reveal your name. We'd like to know who you are. <laughs> the founder looks for a healthy drink with all the necessary vitamins and minerals, but with no sugar, something that was keto friendly and healthy. But most powder drinks on the market, Andrew, have a ton of sugar and caffeine. I would know. I think I drink some every day just to keep me awake. Uh, that's why this founder created Hydronic Hydration, the sugar-free, keto-friendly, plant-based, antioxidant-rich electrolyte powder packets for daily use. Contains all the essential vitamins and minerals with a refreshing taste. Their product contains something called elderberry, which has immune boosting properties for support during cold and flu season. Hydronic Hydration electrolyte powder packets can also fit in your bag or suitcase when traveling. Oh, Andrew, I want to go traveling again. I mean, you're going to go travel to see the Dua Lipa concert pretty soon. Yes, in a month. Now, where's that going to be? Is that like in Nova Scotia? Um, it might as well be Siberia. It's going to <laughs> Buffalo. Like, that's the middle of nowhere, New York. Oh, Buffalo, New York. Ew. God, you might as well stay in Rochester and just watch it on a video screen. Ew. Yeah, I mean, you've got OJ and you've got OJ. <laughs> OJ and OJ. He just taints Buffalo like nobody's business. All right, anyway, uh, OJ doesn't need to be on this sponsorship read because he doesn't deserve that kind of recognition. Hydrating Hydration does. So if you have trouble with eating and drinking healthy during your busy day in 2022, but want a sugar-free, keto-friendly vitamin drink, give Hydronic Hydration a try. There are 30 electrolyte powder packets in a pouch perfect for a one-month supply. Visit the website, Andrew. What is the website? Hydronicehydration.com. Hey, spell it for me very slowly and very ghetto-like. Oh, it's H-Y-D-R-O. <laughs> N-I-Q-U-E. Hydration dot. <laughs> dot com. Yes, baby. It's the word hydration and unique mashed together. Like I said, my child is going to become Hydronique Francois. Sorry, Tony. You're going to have to put up with it. H-Y-D-R-O-N-I-Q-U-E. Hydration.com. Or search for Hydronique Hydration on Amazon.com, where they are offering a $10 discount coupon at checkout for the next week. I don't know about that because I don't, I don't really like Jeff Bezos, but, you know, that's that's up to you. All right, Andrew, um, what do we do next? Do we do gossip? I guess we should do gossip, right? We, we should talk about celebrities because celebrities are the important thing that makes the world go around, right? Yes, I'm a little down for the sip of goss. <laughs> uh, you make that sound like such a delicious drink. I like that. Oh, yeah, it's very frothy and warm. It's great for a cold. Frothy. Oh, Lord. Put, put that up there with moist, along with the words that I do not want to hear. Hey! <laughs> hey, frothy, moist men! <laughs> All righty, celebrity gossip, y'all. Seth Rogen hit it right on the money, I think, Andrew, when he said he does not understand why Hollywood expects people to care about the Oscars. Quote, I don't care who wins the automobile awards. No other industry expects everyone to care about what awards they shower upon themselves. You know, I get what, uh, what Seth is saying. Look, I have grown up liking movies. I've done acting myself. But even I have wondered, uh, Andrew... Why are we watching Hollywood congratulate themselves on what they view to be the best films of the year? I don't know if people judge watching movies based on that. I think it's more so subjective. Like, you go to a movie theater. If you like a movie, great. If you don't like a movie, you don't like a movie. Like, why do you need an award campaign to tell you what your taste should be like? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I wonder completely understand where people are like oh this movie is so good because it got an oscar and i'm like this is garbage i don't understand what the oscars is for yeah i don't know <laughs> god all right how about we go to a flashback of sean white now sean white if i'm not familiar uh, if i'm not mistaken i think sean white uh an olympian i think he just retired like right now like during this whole winter beijing olympic thing and if I'm not mistaken, Andrew, I think we're going to flash back to 2006 when Sean White was just 19 years old. He was being interviewed by, I would guess, an older woman, a, a more adult woman named Kyra Phillips on CNN. This is after he won the gold at the uh, 2006 Olympics. And I got to say, this kid has a, a great sense of humor for a uh, a 19 year old. So I think this is the part of the interview where um, 
uh, the CNN reporter is like, oh, you know, so you brought your gold medal on the airplane. Like, what did you do with it? Like, basically asking, like, you know, oh, did you show it off to people? Blah, blah, blah. All that stuff. So that's pretty much the gist of what you need to know going into this conversation. Were you showing people on the airplane? Were people asking to see it? Or Yeah, like, um, what happened was the funniest thing is, is the stewardess had all seen the, the games, and, and they were just so excited to see me. And they're like, you have the gold? And, and I mean, I had, like... I had unlimited like service after that. I was getting drinks and I was getting <laughs> snacks and I mean I was taking photos in the back with all the all the students. It was fun. Wait a minute, drinks? You're 19 years old. I'm talking about Mountain Dews, baby. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> he called me baby. He <laughs> called me baby. Okay. Um, that's right. Ginger ale for Sean White. Outstanding. Um, okay, getting a little warm here. Um, so do you, have a, do you have a girlfriend? I mean, you're rich, you're 19, you got your own clothesline, you got a gold um, medal that looks like a donut. I don't know. Maybe that woman on CNN was, she could have been like 30s or 40s. And she was like, oh my God, oh, this 19 year old is so hot and funny. You know what? Everybody wanted a piece of the flying carrot back then. So I, Wait, is it's that, weird. Is that what he was called back then? Sean White? Yes. Yes, he was the flying carrot. Now, he's known for snowboarding, right? Uh Uh-huh. He was a snowboarder, and I know he, like, killed it in the X Games, and he killed it at the multiple Olympics, and I forgot when he got the name the flying carrot. I want to say it was during the X Games, like, the first one he ever competed in. Wow. Well, you know, he has kind of, like, a redhead, freckly quality about him, very pale, so I can see what you mean. Like, he does kind of remind me of Carrot Top. I don't know if you know who Carrot Top is, the prop comedian. I know exactly who Carrot Top is. They actually did a video game commercial together when Sean White was on front of, um, I forgot who the snowboarder is that got a video game franchise. Mm. Really? Wow. Carrot Top and Sean White did a video together? It was a like a little commercial for the video game. And I remember because it had Carrot because they were like, oh, he's the flying Carrot and Carrot Top was in the actual commercial for the video game. Really? I gotta mm-hmm. look in. I gotta look into this. All right. Well, finally, think, our, oh, you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think it was Tony Hawk's snowboarding game that he made. I think it's that game. Well, Tony Hawk was known for skateboarding. I don't know if he was known for snowboarding. He was, but he developed video games for the X Games, and I think it was a snowboarding game he developed. Okay. I think I'll have to believe you on that, Andrew. I believe all of that. Okay. That's what I always do with the men who take advantage of me. <laughs> Oh, boy. Dirty, dirty boy. Dirty, dirty, dirty boy. All right. Uh, I think this is like the umpteen time that we're talking about Betty White and a celebrity gossip piece. You know, the new information just keeps on coming out. So now, I mean, in case you thought that all the Golden Girls uh, got along off the screen, no, apparently not. It looks like every one of the Golden Girls hated Betty White, you know? I don't know. So I know that uh, B. Arthur... Uh, one of the uh, Golden Girls cast members did not like Betty White. I already knew that. But uh, what I didn't know uh, from this casting director, apparently a casting director from the Golden Girls said that both B. Arthur and Rue McClanahan hated Betty White. Uh, they even refer to her as the C word in his presence. Yes. Now, Andrew, um, from what I hear, there's a story of... Um, Betty White making fun of Estelle Getty, another one of the Golden Girls, because Estelle Getty got to a point where she could not remember her lines. She actually had to write down her lines on her hand. And I think Betty made some kind of like joke about it in front of a live audience. And that rubbed uh, B and Rue the wrong way. Maybe Estelle, it rubbed her the wrong way. So in case you think that Betty White is such a nice, perky person, apparently, according to these stories, maybe she wasn't so nice and perky. I think Betty White knew that she was, can I say the C word? Should I say the C word? No, we're not going to say it. Uh, People take offense to it. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. If, if, you're, if your instinct is to not say it, then don't say it. Yes. Yeah. We're not going to say it. But in the gay realm, it actually means quite the opposite of an insult. It's actually one of the best compliments you can get. And I think Betty knew that. That's why she didn't care. Mm, really? Yes. If somebody walks up to you and they're like, oh, you look, and they say the C word. Oh, that's a like compliment of all compliments. 
Interesting. Never thought about it that way, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Really? All right. And Betty White was down with the gays, so she knew. She was like, mm, okay, y'all can call me that if you want. It just means I'm better than you. <laughs> wow. Well, hey, we, you can talk crap about her all, all you want. She's dead, so she's, I'm guessing, smiling beneath the coffin. Were you showing people on the air? No. What the hell? No, I was meaning to. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. I, that was supposed to be my joke closing line coming out of celebrity gossip. I was looking for the theme music, not the <laughs> Sean White clip. All right, Andrew. Yeah, um, you know what? Since died. I screwed since I screwed that up, I'm going to give it to you. You, you. you come up with a with a joke closing line coming out of celebrity gossip. Just go ahead. Get, say something, Andrew E. Okay. Betty White, you could see her flying through the air like the flying carrot. Yeah. That's not a joke. That was terrible. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> you could see her flying out of the what? Like a flying carrot? Is that what you came up with? Yeah, she could see her flying through the air like a flying carrot. I love it. I love it because Betty White, she reminds me of a circus acrobat, you know? Just, just so athletic. Hey, that's your celebrity gossip. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that, Andrew? I'm now. I just have this image in my head of Betty White on like a high wire at a circus doing cartwheels and flips. I don't know why. All right, I I, I dig it. I dig it. You know, old ladies doing tricks that old ladies normally don't do. Come on now. Ooh, I see what you did there. Yeah, remixing a song lyric. I like that. I did. Did I? I had no. Seriously, I did, I did not know I was doing that. What song lyric was I remixing? Oh my god, I thought you did. That no. was from Danny Danny D. Kane's Showstopper. Oh, wow. Well, that I, that 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 would that went way over my head. So, <laughs> congratulations to me. That was good, John. That was real good. That was tasty. Hey, you know no. me. You know me. I am I am an unintended genius. I like it. I like it, too. All right. <laughs> That's our celebrity gossip. We got to get out so we could uh, talk to Tommy Lee. Di not, not Tommy Lee Davidson. What the? F Tommy Davidson. Not, I, I, I think I'm getting Tommy Davidson and Tommy Lee Jones like mixed together into one person. They're obviously two very different people. Uh, but actor and comedian Tommy Davison from In Living Color, The Proud Family, etc. I'm going to talk to him next. Uh, and then I think afterwards you'll hear uh, Andrew Levitas, the director of the new Johnny Depp film, Miramata. And then after that, it's uh, Sarah and Alicia from the Love Struck Daily podcast. So it's uh, it's a trifecta of wonderful interview guests. And I think, Andrew, that I should just go to them. Yes, go to them with love in your heart. Because it's Valentine's Day. I, thank you. I was uh, I was thinking I might make that connection myself, but you did it for me, and I appreciate that. Andrew, uh, before we get out of here, what's going on with Lifestyle of a Gay Black Boy podcast? I do know that you recently put up an episode. Yes, there's a new episode out. It's featuring a man whose name is Edgar Gaines. And if you're into like the old school adult entertainment industry, he was one of the biggest, if not the biggest, black gay bisexual porn actor of the 90s and early 2000s and he's now a preacher pastor and security expert so i had a conversation with him and it's really fun if you want to look, check it out love it all right lifestyle of a gay black boy find it wherever you get podcasts andrew it was always a pleasure it was it felt deliciously sweet <laughs> uh, chocolates <laughs> doesn't it feel good when you say everything with a nice soothing tone like ah, okay death row inmates <laughs> yeah all right tommy how you doing man really good man really good those cds uh, yeah, so I work at a radio station in Vermont, and uh, those are just a bunch of old CDs that we don't use because now we're all digital. <laughs> right, right, right. They make great decorations like albums, you know? Exactly, exactly. It brings you back to an era that you probably don't even want to go back to. So, yeah. Uh, so, Tommy, you know, it's funny because we're recording this on, I think, Wednesday the 9th. The Super Bowl is coming uh, this Sunday the 13th. Uh, yeah, I know, right? So, are you rooting for the Rams, the Bengals? I'm 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 going to see the Bengals win it. Okay, all right, and and I think this is, might be the first time Cincinnati has won since whenever, if I'm not mistaken. Whenever. 
since <laughs> whenever. You know, I watched both of their Super Bowls with with um against uh Frisco and against um who was it that they played that lost? It th- that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think they uh lost to Frisco and um somebody else, but they went twice. Oh, okay. You know, it's funny because I was thinking about this uh, going into Super Bowl weekend. Um, You know, obviously, halftime show, it's like the biggest thing for Super Bowl every year, one of the biggest events. It kind of ties football and non-football fans together. It actually made me think back to 1992 when you guys had the In Living Color uh, halftime show. Yeah. And, I mean, were you aware of, like, how much that particular halftime show broke ground and kind of set the precedent for all the halftime shows going forward because i think you guys like you, you took away like 22 million viewers from the super bowl's own halftime show and of course there was all this controversial stuff with uh you know damon waynes and david allen greer during their whole men on football segment um but yeah i mean i think that when you guys did the halftime show the super bowl halftime shows were like marching bands classical music and then because of the kind of halftime show you guys put on, I mean, from then on, it was like, oh, we got to we, we gotta raise the bar. We got to put Michael Jackson on, things like that. So were you aware of how much, like, you guys broke ground back then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I wasn't, I really wasn't aware of the impact it was going to have. I knew that we were going to do doing the halftime show, but I didn't think we were going to steal 22 million people. Mm. But we did. <laughs> but, we were, but, but, but we were innovative that way anyway. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm trying to think, because uh, of course you guys were like, you know, innovative, innovative in terms of like sketch comedy from an African-American perspective. And I'm, I'm wondering now in 2022, is there like an equivalent to uh, in, in Living Color today? Because it seems like you guys kind of came and gone and, and we don't have too much equivalence today. I think there's very, very, um, 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 there's, there's micro, there's a very micro movement of it going on in social media. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's fragmented into millions of pieces. Yeah. Um, um, you, you know, TikTok, you know, you get that and you get, so you take take In Living Color and um, chop it up into like confetti, you know, and throw it in the air and it spells like TikTok. <laughs> Pretty much. Now, um, I, are you still doing that comedy tour with Kenan, David and Sean or is that? I'm not, I'm not, but that tour can come up anytime. That's oh. just when we all decide to do it and go go together. We're very, very, very happy about that. We did a really good job being out there. As you can see, probably over my shoulder, you can see the tour there. Oh, yeah. Nice yeah, and it was very successful. And, and, and why not? Look who was on it. And we, we'd be down to do that anytime. I haven't stopped touring. I'm with Mike Epps now touring and doing okay. a lot of great things. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you're, you're touring with Mike Epps and um, and I believe you're, I mean, do you also have music coming out? Because I- Oh I, yeah, I, it's I, out, it's out. It's a, it dropped it dropped the, the 14th of January. It's called Sweet Reunion. It's okay. me and Dave Koz and, 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 and Take Six and it's doing really good. It's doing really good. When did this happen? Because I've always known you as, you know, actor, comedian, Tommy Davidson from In Living Color, The Proud Family, mm-hmm. like all this stuff. When did this music thing happen? Well, it's 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 been happening. It's yeah. just that I was able to finally get it done and get it out, you know, get it out of my system. And now it's out there um, and it's doing it's doing really well. It's doing really well. And it's only going to get better because I come from music. Yeah. Originally, originally, music is my thing. Got into comedy. I'm, I'm going to say I was lucky. I'm going to say that. I'm going to actually say there's such thing. Yeah. Okay. I, like, I wasn't headed in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. And and kind of going back into the, the comedy world here. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know that if you know, like in addition to um, in living color, you know, I mentioned your, your voice work on the proud family, you voiced Oscar proud, on which the is proud coming family. out soon. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. is it? Yeah. Yeah. Guys have, don't you guys have like a revival series coming out? Yeah, it's coming. It's it's coming out. It's actually a new series on Disney Plus, which comes out the twenty third. Actually, I love it. so on Disney Channel because nice. show back in the day on Disney Channel, and I don't think there was any other show. You know, oddly enough, we're talking about how In Living Color like broke ground from the African American perspective. I think the Proud Family did that. I think from both the African American and Hispanic perspective on Disney Channel, and I don't even think I've seen anything on Disney Channel like that since. So, did, did you get kind of that? Did you get an idea of that impact back then while you were uh, first uh, voicing the the character for that show? 
I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. I knew it was going to happen. I had enough insight into the business for long enough to know that it was really good. You know, it was really good. If something really good gets out there, people are going to get a jump on top of it. You know, it's, it's like this, um, what's, what's the new cell phone? Five, it's like 5G, you know? Yeah. If, if, it, if, you, if it's that good, we'll see. And then we saw, you know? So it was just one of those, one of those things where I just knew because of the quality of it, what was going to happen. But I did not know that it was going to have that long of a life. 15 years ago. 15, wow. years, 15 years ago, it was a smash hit for, for, for little kids. And now those kids are like 29, 30 years old. Yeah, I'm, I'm 30. Yeah, I grew up with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like, it really had an impact, but it follows you guys' trajectory. Yeah. So when you, see, when you see the Proud family now, they're a lot like you. I love it. I love I'm, a it. Little, I'm a little bit behind you guys. So like, you know, hate to say it, but you're like my kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, which is a great thing. It's a great thing. Great gener. You guys are an unbelievable, unbelievable generation. Well, thank you, man. You know, Tommy Davidson, I know your time is limited with us. Uh, where, can, where can we find all your work? Do you, do, do you have a website? Do you have social media that we can follow yeah, you on? Find me on the real, the real Tommy Cat on IG. That'll lead you to everything else. Andrew Levitas, how's it going? How are you, John? Great to be with you. Hey, you know, I, I saw your uh, film Minamata last night. It was very beautifully done. I really loved it. And um, I, you know, to, to be honest, and maybe this is because I am a millennial, like I've never heard of this story until I watched your film last night. Um, and I wonder, you know, because of course we're talking about this legendary photojournalist, Eugene Smith, and how, you know, he's at a point in his time or he's at a point in his career in the early 70s where uh, he's a recluse, he's not as in demand anymore, and then all of a sudden he gets this assignment from Life magazine uh, to go to this, um, this, this sort of coastal city in Japan called Minamata, uh, where they unfortunately are coming down with mercury poisoning and, and uh, you know, capturing photos of that pretty much, you know, makes uh eugene smith's legacy and i was wondering that you know while creating this film um if we're seeing any relation to uh what's happening today i mean do, do you see any relationship there or was it just you know you want to tell this story so without question um firstly thank you for the kind words but without question so i made this film i'm not interested personally in historical stories that feel out of touch or are not connected with where we are today. Part of uh, why I was so attracted to this story and needed to tell it, and it's not an easy one to get made, um, even with a giant global movie star. Um, and But the reason that I was so passionate about it was Gene Smith was there 50 years ago and lit the world on fire, right, by documenting these heroic people in Minamata, Japan, that were showing love and hope and dignity and compassion and literally were showing us how to be and the best that humanity could be in the face of the absolute worst that humanity could deliver. And here we are 50 years later, and the world is really in a worse place. Um, you know, the in and and I should say in Minamata, Japan, there are still victims. There are patients that are fighting just to be recognized, to be seen, to be heard, for a government to say yes, like you you need help and you deserve help, and we did a bad thing. But beyond that, I'm fighting, and this film really should speak to everybody today, right? More than ever, our oceans are polluted, our air is polluted, our food is polluted, and it's all done really to line the pockets of wealthy corporations. And, you know, this is a film that, in my opinion, um, and, a, and a story that can and should inspire all of us to find our voices, to stand up for what we believe, and to realize that, you know, if these folks who had nothing, who really had nothing, can do it, then so can we, right? It's a struggle every day to put food on the table for your kids, to pay your bills, to just make it through through the world, especially now in, in everything that's been going on. But, you know, we look at our neighbors, we look at our friends, we look at the town next door, we look at the city 
you know, uh, an hour away. And in every town and every city, we all, you know, there are these issues, right? It might not be mercury pollution. It might be lead. It might not be, you know, this is happening everywhere. And we as a, as a community have been, or as a global uh, community, have been fractioned, right? We, we, we've been fragmented and told, oh, well, this is your local issue and this is this thing. And we've been treated like the parts per million, the way that they, they categorize uh, you know, chemicals and things that they could put in our food or in the water or pollute into the air. But in point of fact, when you, co- when you look at it as a collective, we are the millions, right? It's our world and we deserve to have a, you know, to, to be protected. And, uh, you know, when you make a film like this, your hope is that you make something that's enjoyable to watch, that's entertaining, that is dynamic, but that also makes you think, and that's nutritious and fills your heart and your spirit and your mind in a way where, you know, you feel like you can do more that day. You feel like you can protect your children more. You can speak up more. And that if you do, you will be heard. You will be seen. Somebody will help. You know, um, there's a, a wonderful song that Catherine Jenkins, the, uh, you know, uh, opera singer and uh, Skylar Gray, a wonderful uh, singer songwriter in her own uh, wrote together for the end uh, credits. Um, and it's called one single voice. And it talks about that. And it has lines like, uh, you know, a single match can, can light a fire, you know, can, 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 can start a forest fire, right? A, a single pebble in the water can start a giant wave, you know, and it's that feeling that we have it inside of us, right? By showing love and humanity and joy and laughter, we can do something good. We can inspire each other and, and uplift each other. And so, uh, you know, I, uh, that's really why this story was so important to me because it is present. It is right now. Now, I, uh, I'm hoping you can talk to me about Johnny Depp's performance because, look, I mean, I, I've seen many a Johnny Depp movie and he always is phenomenal. But in this film in particular, there was just something different uh, about uh, uh, him in this film. And he is basically unrecognizable uh, in, in this film, which obviously is a, is a compliment. And I was I'm wondering if you could uh, uh, go in depth on your uh, relationship working with Johnny Depp through this movie and also um, how, you know, sort of the unfortunate beating of his public image may have affected the, the making and the release of this film. Sure. So, you know, Johnny was the most incredible creative partner you could have. I mean, there is no one out there that has better better knowledge, better film awareness and who's more giving on a on a film set especially when he believes. And I think part of why you see such a committed performance um, and something, something different uh, from Johnny in this film, something that we really haven't seen elsewhere um, is because Johnny is a, is a incredibly giving and generous person who does see the best in the folks around him. I mean, to his detriment, if you walked up to Johnny and said on the street and said, my grandmother needs a hundred dollars for an operation, like, he's actually handing out the hundred dollars to you. You know, like he buys that. He doesn't question you. He has that thing in him. You know, we were shooting all over the world. We're in Serbia. You know, Johnny carries the Jack Sparrow costume in a, in a suitcase and, you know, goes and puts on the costume and the makeup and on his one off day in 30 days, will show up at a local hospital with no press, no people around just there to try to bring some joy to, to young kids. He has that in him, but he hasn't had the opportunity to ever be part of a film that actually could make a difference. He's brought a lot of joy to people with his films, but he's never made a film that was about a subject matter like this, something that was so clearly um, for everybody, right? That was so clearly trying to to do something good and and that was so serious, frankly. Um, And I think that commitment was, was so meaningful to him that there was a different kind of focus uh, on this film. It wasn't about performance and it wasn't about in particular, the giant movie stars performance in a film. When you go see, uh, you know, Jack Sparrow uh, pirates, you know, that's about Jack Sparrow. That's about the movie star and that performance. And he's got a peacock, you know, just by nature, the character is a peacock. And most of the characters that, that Johnny's attracted to by nature, they're quite, showy. This was a character who's the antithesis of that, right? There's a character who is not showy at all. He's standing back. He's the documenter, right? He's us. And he's a, he's an av- avatar really for the audience. And so 
He's showing you his mind, his spirit, and all of those things that are inside of Johnny. He's showing through Eugene Smith to the audience and it's very different. Um, and so in many ways, I think this film represents more of who Johnny is as an artist, as a, as a, as a human being um, than anything that he's done before. And so I think what you and so many others have reacted to in, in, in saying that it's, you know, such a special performance or, or, you know, one of the best, if not the best is, is that, is that he's giving you himself and in no other films, I think, has he been, had that opportunity uh, to do it. And look, it's been a long and tricky road and difficult road. We had a troubles with a, a studio that, you know, we, we premiered in Berlin uh, to, uh, you know, it was incredible. You know, I had some of the Minamata victims uh, and their families fly over from Japan to Berlin. We had all of our, or many of our artists uh, there at the, at the premiere, there were thousands of people and there was a 15 minute standing ovation. It was remarkable to see these people that have suffered so much, you know, get that, get that recognition, especially because the reason they gave us their uh, blessing to make a film like this. And I should say a creative film like this, a poetic film, a film that um, is uplifting and is not, you know, a documentary. It's something that's meant to be watched and enjoyed, right. And engaged with um, their purpose was to say, look, don't do it for us and our fight, do it so that we can help others and make sure there aren't any other Minamatas in the world. And so for them to see that that might happen and that legacy could continue and maybe their suffering wasn't just uh, in vain in the corner with no one looking uh, was incredibly rewarding for me, for them. And then, you know, uh, uh, our studio at the time, MGM, bought the film in, in Berlin and, you know, was going to do a massive awards campaign and a huge rollout. Uh, to really get the film, you know, get the film seen. And, and that went sideways and that uh, was really unfortunate, but we found, you know, for it, but on the flip side of that, we had such a long list of studios that wanted to, to buy the film and be our partner that we were finally able to get it away from MGM uh, and find a, a new partner who was really engaged with the subject matter and, and cared and wanted to make a, a positive difference and bring this film to the world. And so you know, I'm so excited that that the film's coming out this weekend and that, you know, people in the States will be able to see it. The film's come out around the world already. Um, and in Japan in particular, it was uh, was, you know, really uh, incredibly well received. So I'm I'm really keen for for audiences to see it and, you know, hopefully become inspired. Awesome. Well, you know, we're, we're recording this on Thursday the 10th. So, of course, you're referring to uh, this coming weekend, uh, 12th and 13th, Super Bowl weekend, in other words. Uh, so, Andrew uh, Levitas, man, it's been a pleasure to speak with you about this new film, Minamata, the latest uh, starring Johnny Depp. And uh, best of luck. I mean, like I said, you know, the film is beautifully done, and I know it's going to continue to get great reception. Well, thank you, John. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Tell me about your podcast, Love Struck Daily. I mean, it's obviously very relevant considering that uh, as we record this on Friday the 11th, we're going into Valentine's weekend. So uh, t tell me what can we expect as we are in the uh, era of love right now? <laughs> Well, we aim to be your antidote to doom scrolling. You know the feeling when you finish a great book or you watch a show and there's this wonderful happy ending, you just have that ah oh, feeling. We aim to give you that every day, every weekday with a true love story from the present and the past. And we're going to tell you the true love and happiness of real people so that we can give you a little boost for the rest of your day. So give us like 15, 20 minutes. We'll give you those wonderful, happy feelings. Can you give me uh, an example of a great story that you guys came across for your podcast? Oh yeah, Alicia, you want to take this one? <laughs> yeah, sure. I, mean, I think I think our um, Valentine's Day episode next week is going to be especially exciting. It's with a relationship and dating coach who works at Hinge, and she's going to help singles, you know, optimize their their profiles and their love lives to to really get out there. So I'm really excited about that one. Um, so far, what we've had previously this past week, our launch week, uh, we did this great um, episode with this couple who just, she'd been on like 200 first dates, he'd been on seven, and and they came together and they found each other um, in a city as big as LA, and they're really happy. It's just a really sweet, cute love story. Wow. And... Uh... You know, what what caught me is the, the the story that you mentioned about the uh, relationship and dating coach. Like, what what are your guys' views on that? Because I feel like there, 
it's very polarizing. I mean, there, there are some people that think, oh, you know, love is just something that you just kind of wait patiently for and it may happen when you least expect it. And then there are some people who are kind of for the this coaching idea that, yeah, maybe you should go to a professional and try to, uh, you know, have like a five point plan on how to get a relationship. Like, wh- what do you guys think about that whole coaching idea? Well, spoiler alert, one of the things that she talks about is how the idea of dating really didn't show up in culture until like the late 1800s. Dating and meeting people and meeting new people is a skill and it's it's okay to not be good at it. Like, for example, I have been married for 20 plus years and I met my husband in high school and I know that is super nauseating. I apologize, but I've never dated. I don't know how to go meet somebody. And Alicia was dating for almost our entire friendship and she would tell me stories and I'd be like, how, 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 how do you do this? I don't understand. Dating is a skill and it, it is a skill that you can learn. And it's a skill that helps you figure out what you want, which is the foundation of creating a good relationship. You have to know what you want in your relationships before you can go out and figure out how to build it. Yeah. 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 And it's definitely sort of a numbers game in some cases for me, but not for everybody. Um, but one thing that she said on our podcast was, that, you know, everybody's born knowing how to love, but not everybody's born knowing how to date. In fact, nobody is. So it is something of a skill to to acquire. Absolutely. And I do, I do know that uh, before my current relationship, I went through, God, what seemed like uh, many years of just uh, uh, online dating experiences that were, you know, hit and miss. And I even tried uh, it's just sitting at Starbucks, reading a book, thinking that, oh, maybe I'll have that meet cute experience that you find in the movies. <laughs> and then, uh, I, you know, one online dating experience when I was just about to give up just happened to work in my favor. And here we are, you know, almost two years later. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it works different for everybody. And there is a numbers game quality about it that you just kind of have to uh, to uh, to put up with. Um, how can we find your guys' podcast? I- I'm really interested in listening to this. You can find us anywhere you listen to your tasty podcasts by searching Love Struck Daily. Every weekday, we will deliver you a new happy love story. And um, can I invite you onto the show to tell your story? Because I kind of want to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my God. This is the first podcaster has invited me on the show. This is great. I love it. Yeah, Yeah. that would be so exciting. And if anybody else has a love story to tell us, we're we're always open. Our inbox is is very open at lovestruckdaily at frolic.media. We want to hear your love story. We really, really do. Okay, mm-hmm. wonderful. Um, so so what, what's your social media? At Lovestruck Daily on Instagram and Lovestruck Daily on Twitter. And you can find us wherever you find podcasts. We would be so excited to share happy happy stories with you every day. I love it. And, and uh, before I let you guys go, so, well, first of all, uh, do, do you want me to just DM you and, and we'll figure out how to make this happen with me appearing on your podcast? Yeah, email uh, yeah. lovestruckdaily at frolic.media or um, I can give my information to Bill to pass along to you, but totally serious, I would love to have you on. Yeah, yeah, very much. I did not expect this invitation. I feel honored. Um, <laughs> all right, wonderful. So, oh, yeah, before I let you guys go, what do you guys think about this uh, concept of Valentine's Day, because I know that there are some people that buy into the commercialism of it, and then there are others that say, eh, you know, any day should be a day where we recognize how much we love each other. So what do you guys think about that? So I, I think, think... You go ahead first, Alicia. You go ahead first. Well, I used to be a florist, so for a long time, like, I had trauma around Valentine's Day because it was <laughs> such a big year for me. Uh, but now that I'm out of it, been out of it for about 10 years, I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, we have set aside a day for love. I don't think you have to do a big grand romantic gesture or anything like that that costs a lot of money. But I think it is nice to, to say, okay, this is the day we're setting aside to, you know, validate or affirm our relationship, if that's what everybody's into. Yes. Okay. If if you don't want to accept pressure from outside yourself about how you demonstrate affection, then by all means, don't. I happen to love Valentine's Day because at about four o'clock local time, all the candy goes on sale and then I go buy it. That's <laughs> my favorite part. Also a good yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah. There's always the candy in, in case uh, love doesn't work in your favor on Valentine's Day. All right. Sarah and Alicia from Love Struck Daily, of course, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll connect about 
apparently me coming on your podcast. Yeah, that'd be great. The Anything Show with John Francois is on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get podcasts. Join us on YouTube, Facebook.com slash The Anything Show, and Instagram and TikTok at Anything Show Francois. Join Andrew Vandertunt on Lifestyle of a Gay Black Boy wherever you get podcasts and on Instagram and TikTok at AJ Vandertunt.